Good evening and welcome to VTV News. I'm Quentin Hall. And I'm Swati Ganesh. A Vanderbilt University police officer was arrested last week. Jordan Thompson was arrested for gun possession under the influence. He was also faced charges of supplying alcohol to minors and lying to police. One of the minors was Chase Whetstone, a 19-year-old community service officer. Whetstone had discharged Thompson's gun into his neighbor's ceiling. Whetstone was also charged with similar offenses. The two teenage women in attendance were issued misdemeanors. Six Vanderbilt faculty members were honored with awards last Thursday. Chancellor Nicholas Zeppos recognized six Vanderbilt faculty members for their teaching, research, and service. The award ceremony took place on April 6th at Langford Auditorium. The six faculty members that were honored are Professors Jean LaBeouf, Jana Lauderdale, Lori Cutting, George Homburger, Mazita Montahir, and Andrew Van Schack. Each award comes with a $5,000 prize. Corey Beatty returned to the courtroom on Tuesday. Beatty was found guilty one year ago of raping a Vanderbilt student. Now 23, he served about a year of his 15-year sentence in the Riverbend Maximum Security Institution in Nashville. The hearing was scheduled so Beatty's lawyer could argue for a new trial. Beatty's lawyer, Peter Strians, said he needed more time to prepare. Criminal Court Judge Monty Watkins granted the request. Strians is expected to file a revised motion by the end of May. Four Vanderbilt sophomores are in Lisbon, Portugal competing for a big prize. The four students are currently competing in the week-long KPMG International Case Competition. The team comprises of Amit Iyer, John Kim, Richard Hamrick, and Khan Ikak, who come from a diverse array of interdisciplinary majors. They defeated 41 other university teams in the national contest in New York and are facing 22 teams from all over the world. The competition is the largest undergraduate international case competition in the world. A group of KPMG leaders judge the students' abilities to formulate and present practical solutions in case studies. The competition started this Monday and is ending today. This year's case focused on fintech and disruption of financial services industry and how big data can be turned into actionable business insight. Vanderbilt's public policy program is getting an expansion after a Vanderbilt alum and his wife donated $5 million to the program. The gift will support the public policy program, its major, and a proposed new major and program in quantitative social sciences. John Arnold graduated in 1995 and founded Centaurus Energy after leaving Vanderbilt. His wife, Laura, served as executive vice president of Cobalt International Energy. The Arnolds have previously supported NEAT-based scholarships at Vanderbilt, endowing the Arnold Family Scholarship in 2005 and the Arnold Scholars Program in 2009. John Arnold also served on the university's Board of Trust and is a current member of the College of Arts and Science Board of Visitors. Their support will strengthen innovative interdisciplinary programs that will engage students in the study of social trends, governance challenges, and policy problems. Vanderbilt has been ranked Best Value College in Tennessee for the third year in a row by Smart Asset. The company looked at scholarships provided, starting salary for graduating students, tuition, living costs, and retention rates as factors of ranking. The average amount of scholarships and grants awarded to students at Vanderbilt is around $39,000. Vanderbilt tuition is $43,000 and living costs are around $18,000. The average starting salary for graduating students is around $58,000. Vanderbilt has a high student retention rate of 97%. Vanderbilt is making recycling easier and more accessible. The Vanderbilt University Sustainability and Environmental Management Office implemented the switch to dual stream recycling March 17th. The dual stream recycling combines plastic and aluminum recyclables together rather than separating all recyclables out individually. Now there will be recycling bins that can hold aluminum and plastic simultaneously. All the recycling bins for aluminum make up one-third of recycling bins on campus. They continue to be the most underused. Currently, the recycling program diverts 50% of waste from landfills. Part of this new program has also focused on increasing involvement from both Vanderbilt student government and Greek life in recycling on campus. 
As part of the initiative, the university has already installed recycling bins in Greek houses to increase awareness and participation within the house. African American seniors shared their life stories through the arts at Vanderbilt Surratt Student Center today. From 10 a.m. to noon, paintings, masks, quilts, and other cherished items were displayed as part of the life lessons from and for African American seniors exhibition. The exhibition showcased the art and genealogy projects of participants in the Voices from Our America Wisdom of Elders project. Wisdom of Elders is an initiative founded by Ifeoma Nwako, Associate Provost for Strategic Initiatives and Partnerships and Associate Professor of English. The project focuses on revealing and recognizing older adults' wisdom and incorporating them into K-12, undergraduate, graduate, and health professions education. Following the exhibition, a symposium titled Voices from Our America took place at the Bishop Joseph Johnson Black Cultural Center from 1 to 2 p.m. The discussion focused on the importance of preserving African American communities, past histories, and cultures. DJ Khaled isn't the only one making remixes. For years, Chancellor Zeppos has taught a class on the Federalist Papers. However, this year, he changed things up by implementing Hamilton and other works into the curriculum. Hamilton is an award-winning musical play about the life of former United States President Alexander Hamilton. When Chancellor Zeppos heard about Hamilton, he teamed up with Professor Alice Randall to remix the classic course. He incorporated songs like The Room Where It Happens and Dear Theodiasius to his class. The class is being taught by Fisk, at Fisk University with a blend of Fisk and Vanderbilt students. Many students have praised the class for making history more exciting and making them get out of their own comfort zones. Now, for this week's sports news, here's VTV News correspondent, Madison Foglio. Happy Thursday, Vanderbilt. I'm Madison Foglio, here with your Commodore Sports Update. This Thursday at 8 p.m. Central Time, the Vanderbilt baseball team will face off at the Hawk against fellow SEC rival, Florida. The Gators have taken the W in the last two series between the Commodores. The Commodores' overall record with Florida is 72-132-1, and one, dating all the way back to 1927. Coming off of a huge series win against the University of South Carolina last weekend, the Vandy boys are looking to carry their momentum with them this Thursday night. We wish you the best of luck, boys! This Saturday, your Vanderbilt women's lacrosse team is back in action in a huge game against Big East rival Temple University. The Commodores, who are 3-3, three three, are currently ranked 5th in the Big East and need this victory over Temple, who is currently in a three-way tie for second. In order to secure a spot in the Big East tournament, the Commodores need to finish in the top four teams, as those are the only four teams that proceed. It is also senior day for the Commodores, as they will be honoring six seniors at the beginning of the game. The first 200 fans to come will receive a reversible Vanderbilt lacrosse penny. The game is at 1 p.m. Central Time this Saturday at the Vanderbilt Lacrosse Complex, and we really hope to see you there. The Vanderbilt bowling team began their NCAA tournament competition this Wednesday as three Commodores, Giselle Poss, Maria Bolnova, and Kristen Kwa were named All-American. Both Poss, a senior, and Belnova, a freshman, were named first-team All-Americans while Kwa, a sophomore, was named an honorable mention All-American. In addition, Belnova was also named the National Rookie of the Year by the NCAA. Pauls and Belnova are the sixth and seventh Commodores to receive such an honor. We congratulate all three of you on this prestigious achievement. This Monday marks the annual Black and Gold Banquet for all Vanderbilt ath athletes. It is a time to reflect on the memories that we were made, the upsets that occurred, and the victories achieved during the 2017 school year. Awards will be given out to those who took the extra mile this year. That's all we have for sports this week. Tune back next Thursday for more updates. For VTV News, I'm Madison Foglio. Thanks, Madison. Now for this week's weather, here's VTV News weather correspondent, John Horzen. Hello Vanderbilt, my name is John Horson here with your seven day cast for the week. Because <laughs> forecast. Anyway, summer is officially here. Friday and Saturday are going to be virtually the same. Pretty cloudy with highs of up to 85 and lows in the mid 60s. Sunday is going to be the same, just a little less hot. Monday is going to rain a lot and it will be cooler while that's happening. High of 77, low of 57. Tuesday, that rain will be upgraded to a thunderstorm. High of 79, low of 61. 
Wednesday, we're back to partly cloudy skies with a weekend high of the mid 80s. And to round out our Newsweek, Thursday is going to see scattered thunderstorms across the state with a 60% chance of one of those storm systems hitting Nashville. High of 82, low of 58. For VTV News, I'm John Horzen. That's all for tonight's broadcast. Thanks for watching VTV News. I'm Swathi Ganesh. And I'm Quentin Hall. Tune in next week for more top stories. Thank you.